I posted a, a photo of hair stem and I had a gentleman ask, you know, what are you doing with this? And I decided, well, I'm going to do a podcast on this to explain a little bit more in detail, you know, the evolution of my thinking of how we developed this process and what we're achieving with it. So essentially... I haven't been as, ex as excited with PRP or platelet-rich plasma, which basically for those that don't know what it is, you draw blood out of the body, spin it down, uh, ultra refine it, and then inject it back into the scalp. Now I do use PRP with every single hair transplant procedure. I find that that has worked really well in terms of helping uh, ensure graft survival and improving um, uh, more consistency in graft survival. So to me, that's a no brainer with, with surgery. I've been doing it since 2010 or 2011, so 11 or 12 years now uh, at the time of this podcast. Um, however, with PRP, I've tried it with A-cell, which is a porcine A-cell aerodermis that, that I have gotten sometimes good results, sometimes not good results. And I'm not getting as consistent an outcome as I would like. So I haven't, uh, I've been, I was looking the last couple of years for something that could be a replacement. And so we developed this process, uh, which I wanted to overcome some of the limitations of PRP. So what are the limitations? First and foremost is pain. People hate the pain of having blood draws, having a anesthetic, a block placed across the scalp and place and then uh, injected in there. And then there's a recovery involved with that, especially if they do that repeatedly. And with women, it's even worse because with women with their fine hairs there, sometimes they actually undergo a shock loss with PRP, which is also not good. So there are a lot of issues with uh, PRP injections into the scalp, in my opinion. And then the one I just mentioned before is variable results. So you get variable results, painful outcomes, risk of shedding. Um, and you say, well, why do you get variable results? Because the, um, the number of active growth factors in your blood is inconsistent. You don't necessarily have a high concentration of it, even if you concentrate native blood, but I can't take someone else's blood. So what you look at is right now, if you think about what sort of uh, postmenopausal women are going through is that they get something called biomimetic or bioidentical hormones. You probably have heard about that. They're plant-based hormones or plant-based growth factors. In this case, what this is, is it's concentration of plant-based growth factors in a very concentrated format that are placed at a very high level and concentrated and then infused through the scalp through a special device that, that I use after exfoliation that allows the growth factors penetration. And the nice thing with that in, in about 90 minutes, it takes about 90 minutes to do the, the session, there is no pain. There is no recovery and there's very little risk of shedding, although there's always a risk of shedding anytime you get near that area. Um, it just makes the scalp healthier and look better and, and, and as well as the hair, but it actually uh, stimulates hair growth pretty quickly. I've seen it sometimes even after one or two sessions. So the, this, the way that I do it is I do it once a month for three months and then maintain it every six months. Now, if you've got if you're younger and you have more aggressive hair loss, I may do it uh, every four months for a while before I go to six months. But in general, you can usually maintain it with every six months. Now, the key with this, just like PRP, it's not necessarily a substitute for uh, finasteride minoxidil, particularly for men. I think men in general who are needing to be on a regimen, first of all, I would encourage you to listen to my, my hair genome podcast to understand sort of how I integrate my philosophy with the chemical side of things for men. But for men, I think that their hormones are just too strong. And I, I just don't think that as a standalone, this therapy would be ethical or rational. Now, with some exceptions, you know, if a man has already been stable on medical therapy, fantastic. Or, uh, I mean, as a bonus, as the one that I showed with the before and after, or if someone is, let's say, older, they don't really want finasteride minoxidil, they've got a pretty slow hair loss, they want something to maintain it, it's a great reasonable option. And to be honest with you, for women, it's a, it's oftentimes a first line for me because women don't necessarily need finasteride minoxidil. And so I go with them using a combination of um, this uh, hair stem therapy and my follicular spray, which unfortunately right now is sold out on Amazon. So uh, I'm trying to get my supplier to re-up on this. So I, as of right now, there's you can't even get my product. I've sold out all thousand units in the last like less than a year. So it's been insane. Um, the demand on this product, which has been great. It's a all natural uh, spray that helps with uh, regeneration. 
Um, but anyways, uh, I can do another podcast on that. I may have done, I think I've done one on this, but that is, that is my go-to for women uh, oftentimes as a first line. Now, do I always do as a first line? No. Some women have, are, are like, what do we call Ludwig threes that are really advanced and they need something biochemical in addition to a full workup. And I'm going to do a podcast specifically catered to women to give more of an intail, a detailed current philosophy of how I approach women. But anyways, this is a, a general understanding of, of how I approach uh, uh, of patients that would benefit from this hair stem therapy.